Okay, so parts of this video may not make sense. To those of you who are not following Dan Brown's conversation about piracy and ad blocker and YouTube Red and the social contract between creators and etc. If you're not following that conversation, there's a link in the description or boop, there's a card. You can check out the uh, conversation, come back, and then this video will make sense because I'm just going to kind of dive in midstream, no introduction except for this. All right, let's go. Okay, so we're going to do a, a quick little um, high school uh, SAT prep, right? Okay, so TiVo is to television as ad blocker is to the internet. So it's been known for basically the entirety of the internet that ads kind of run shit around here. We couldn't exist without advertising and the internet would not at all be what it is today if it weren't for advertising uh, and the advertisers dumping millions of dollars into this really unknown venture that was the internet, causing bubbles, yes, but ultimately enabling us to do what we do. As such, I'm not comfortable always using ad blockers. I definitely used to use ad blockers when I was younger and I was like, fuck the man, I'm doing this, I'm getting my internet for free, bleh. But as I've grown older, uh, I've realized that it doesn't cost me anything except for maybe a little bit of time, maybe a little bit of annoyance. For the most part, ads have become fairly unobtrusive. I just skip the pre-rolls or sometimes I watch them because the person I'm watching I particularly like and they're gonna get that extra one and a half cents. Ultimately, I know if I really like a creator, I've got to support them on some other channel, whether it be going to see their live shows, buying their music, buying their merch, supporting them on Patreon, some other method of supporting them. That being said, it brings me to the next point, which is the creator-consumer social contract. I just don't think there is one, especially not at the small levels of YouTube. Your content doesn't have inherent value. Because I create a piece of content does not mean that you owe me anything for creating that piece of content. I volunteered my time to do so. Uh, until there's a budget behind what I'm doing, uh, then there's, there's really no reason for me to expect any payment for it. And what I mean by a budget is that I've assessed the income potential and I've spent accordingly. A budget doesn't just mean that I spent money on a piece of content to create it, right? Because I spent $2,000 on a piece of camera equipment, you suddenly owe me $2,000 for watching any of, the any of the stuff that I produce with it? No, of course not. That's bullshit. A budget means I have an expected audience that is going to watch this piece of content X number of times, and therefore I can expect X amount of income from it, and therefore I will spend accordingly. Okay, so where does all this leave us? I, I don't know. Uh, that's what I'm looking for the Bogo tribe to answer for me. I don't know what the next phase looks like. I think YouTube Red's a good one. I think that uh, the Netflix model's great. It works for me. It makes me feel like I have a clean conscience. Also, I have my computer is protected, uh, and so I don't have to expose myself to too many viruses and bad things. Uh, as another viewer pointed out, they get, you know, they use their ad blocker because they had uh, an ad uh, instigated malware on their on their computer so maybe that's a reason for me to pick up an ad blocker I don't know but the conversation about Donald Trump was another thing that made me want to jump into this video because I've been making content uh, in the past couple of weeks about Donald Trump in some semblance of a way and uh, last week I talked specifically about having fans and how that kind of disturbs me and makes me weirded out and how the popular vote and uh, at least I thought about all that stuff I don't know if I ever made it in the video because video was all rambly and random. The point is that Donald Trump works really well on camera, right? He, he's a really pretty decent entertainer. Uh, people pay to watch him. And, uh, and he has some value there. Whether he'd be a president that I would want to then watch on television, I don't think I'd want to watch him if I lived in the country. So, um, you know, if, uh, if I could move, maybe I'd want to watch President Trump on television doing ridiculous things. I do want to talk about next week um, honesty in politics and how I think that Donald Trump is probably one of the few that is uh, actually being honest. Uh, and that's scary. Okay, so I'm going to go. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you haven't checked out Dan's conversation and the stuff, it's linked there and doing the things with the stuff and the linking and the liking and the commenting. Tell me what you guys think about the stuff that I said that I can't remember what it was anymore. But I'll remember when I edit it, and hopefully it'll make sense. A bye bye. Ah, oh, crap, I didn't have any audio there.
Oh, I did. Okay. Good. 